Vladimir Putin and Angela Merkel held a joint conference in Moscow just hours before a ceasefire in Libya planned for Saturday at midnight. Turkey and Russia and the UN representative for Libya have called for the ceasefire. But the warlord Khalifa Haftar has refused to adhere to it. We welcome the German initiative to have a conference in Berlin on Libya, and we would like to invite all involved parties and states. All decisions should be coordinated with those involved in the Libya conflict, and we should also have Mr. Salami as a UN representative. Let's bring in Steph Vassan. She's joining us uh, from Moscow to uh, talk us uh, through what the takeaway message was uh, from that press conference, Steph. Well, it was clear that the main visit for, for Angela Merkel to come to Moscow was to get everyone on board for this uh, peace conference uh, in Berlin. And one of the uh, reasons that this peace conference can actually happen is that it needs to be a ceasefire in Libya. And that's what she discussed uh, with uh, President Putin. Putin and Erdogan earlier last week uh, called for this uh, ceasefire to happen at midnight in uh, a, le a little less than four hours from now. And uh, Putin was still optimistic, he said in the press conference, that this, be, uh, this ceasefire will actually happen. He didn't only talk to Merkel today. He was actually quite busy uh, diplomatically. He called also the crown prince for the uh, United Arab Emirates earlier in the morning, also someone who was actually on the side of uh, a country, who was on the side of uh, Khalifa Haftar. And he also had a conversation on the phone with the emir of Qatar. So although uh, Haftar has said that he rejects any calls for a ceasefire, there might be some uh, plan here uh, that has been cooked up by President Putin. And we'll have to see in a little less than four hours if this is actually going to materialize. Interestingly, also, that uh, during this press conference, uh, it was a bit of an awkward moment when uh, President Putin was asked about the allegations by Turkey that uh, Russian mercenaries are fighting on the side of Khalifa Haftar, 2,000 uh, of them. And uh, Putin said that, uh, well, there might be Russian citizens, but there's nothing uh, state-sponsored here, uh, and they're also not being paid by the state. But uh, this is allegedly the Wagner, the so-called Wagner group, who sends these uh, mercenaries, and this is a close confident uh, of uh, President Putin. Um, Angela Merkel, of course, is uh, anxiously waiting uh, for this uh, ceasefire to materialize because uh, she doesn't want any more bloodshed and she's also worried about more refugees coming to Europe, uh, specifically to Germany. OK, Steph Vassen, thank you. Well, Mahmoud Abdel Wahed is in Tripoli and says it has yet to be seen if Putin can convince Haftar and his forces to implement the ceasefire on the ground. Ceasefire does not seem to be accepted by uh, the both uh, uh, warring factions because, as you know, that uh, Hefter has rejected this uh, ceasefire uh, uh, call by both Erdogan and uh, uh, Putin. And uh, meanwhile, fighting uh, renewed uh, today in uh, southern Tripoli, and government military sources uh, say that they have killed uh, uh, Sudanese mercenaries fighting along with Hefter's forces in a couple of axes in uh, southern uh, Tripoli. But the question now is whether or not this ceasefire call would be uh, translated into action on the ground. As you know, that many people here, in, especially in the west of Libya, are uh, calling for uh, calm. Actually, the government of National Accord have accepted the ceasefire agreement, but again, it's not being implemented on the ground. But the question now is that many people are asking here in the west of Libya whether or not uh, President Putin can put pressure on Haftar's forces to stop the military escalation in southern Tripoli. As th the question he answered about the Wagner Russian mercenaries fighting along with Haftar's forces, he said that they do not uh, belong to the state and they don't get paid by the state. But again, the Russians, and they're making a change on the ground. They have been helping Haftar's forces take control of several locations. They have been escalating the fighting in southern uh, Tripoli. Anas al Gomati is an affairs analyst on Libya at the Sadiq Institute, and he says the peace conference to be held in Berlin is an effort to unite the international community. Well, the conference is actually a, a, almost a misnomer. So when we look at the actual content and the participants of the conference, it's a conference to try to get international players to agree amongst themselves about who they're going to support in Libya. It's not a conference between both parties, that in Khalifa Haftar and, 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 the, and the GNA, uh, Faya Sarraj. That's not, the, that's not the subject of the conference. The subject is even more startling when we think there is so much uh, uh, disunity in the international community 
that they have to have a conference about finding a unified position amongst themselves before they can even bring Libyans to the table. That's the main issue here, is that there is so much that is being said about how the international community supports uh, the GNA in Tripoli. That's the, the UN-backed government. Now, in, in, in truth, they offer almost little to no support at all, which has been the case for the last nine months, which is why Khalifa Haftar has not been sanctioned, it's why he's not been condemned, it's why he's not been criticised. And that's why the UN-backed government in Tripoli have to go to Turkey to try and find uh, uh, military support over the last month and a half. That's really where we start to find that it's the, it's the international community position number one that is being called into question, and that's what the subject of this Berlin conference is. I think we're very, very far away from a peaceful settlement, personally, and I think that's because there seems to be almost no appetite to rein in on the backers of Haftar. Now, there's really important things that could be done. An arms embargo would probably be the first. Now, that's going to ripen the local factions to believe that they can't continue this forever.